Hi, I'm Robin. Today I'd like to walk you through the ribbon embroidery in our enchanting bouquet box kit. You'll want to press the ribbon on a low heat setting to remove any creases. And don't wash the fabric before stitching or the stamp design will wash out. This video is a supplement to your kit, so be sure to refer to your leaflet when creating your project. Let's begin! The stem stitch is used to stitch the flower stems. Thread your tapestry needle, which is the one with the big eye, with two strands of floss and knot the end. Bring the needle up at one end of a stem. Go back down approximately one eighth inch from where you came up and pull gently so the stitch lies softly on top. Come back up beside the center of the last stitch. Again, move about an eighth of an inch and go down, letting the thread lie gently on top. Keep continuing, each time coming up at the center of the previous stitch and moving about an eighth of an inch at a time. Continue to the end of the stem and stitch all stems before beginning the ribbon embroidery. Now I'll show you how to thread a needle with silk ribbon and lock it. Cut an 18 inch length of ribbon and thread it into the tapestry needle. Pull about three inches through and insert your needle about a half an inch from the end and push the ribbon down. Pull on the long tail to secure it to your needle. To knot the other end of the ribbon, fold over about a half an inch at the end of the tail and insert your needle close to the fold. Pull the needle and ribbon through to form a knot. Now I'll demonstrate a straight stitch. Straight stitch is used to stitch some leaves in your design right here. Start by bringing the prepared needle up from the back at one end of the stitch and you'll go back down at the other end. As you're pulling it through, use your thumb to keep the ribbon flat so that it doesn't tangle and then your finished stitch will lie nicely. Continue at the end of each stitch in your diagram, always using your finger or thumb to guide that ribbon and make sure it lies nicely at the end. When you finish stitching these leaves, you'll need to tie a knot on the back. Tie a knot on the back like this. Pushing it close to the fabric and then trim the end. Tie a knot after completing each flower or bunch of leaves. Don't drag the ribbon from one area to another. Now we'll try the ribbon stitch. The ribbon stitch is used to add tan leaves to the brown stems. Start by bringing your prepared needle up from the back at the end of one of the stems and at the wide end of the printed design. Lay the ribbon over the printed leaf. Get it laying nice and flat. Kind of look beneath and insert your needle through the ribbon at the point of the design. And pull it through. Pull it through very slowly and you'll see it will form a point. 
don't keep pulling. As soon as you see that point, you have to stop because if you keep pulling, it will go away and you'll have to start over. Now let's create a loop stitch. The loop stitch is used to create the small purple flowers and the large golden yellow flower. Bring your prepared needle up from the back at the narrow point of the printed design and insert it slightly in front of the point where you brought it up. Pull the ribbon through forming a loose loop. I find it helpful when I get close to the end to insert my needle in there so that I don't accidentally pull too hard and pull it all the way through and it makes a nice dimensional loop. Then you'll move on to the next one. You're going to have nice loose stitches here that are dimensional. For the yellow flower, start at the outside row and bring the needle up at the narrow end of each petal. The next stitch is the Lazy Daisy. The Lazy Daisy stitch is used to create buds and leaves around the roses. Bring your prepared needle up from the back at the narrow end of the pointed leaf or bud. Insert the needle back down beside the point where it came out. And that will create a loop. Don't pull it all the way through. Bring it back up at the other end of the printed design and through that loop. Use your finger to guide the ribbon as you pull it out so that it lies nice and then go back down through the fabric on the outside of the loop. The last stitch to learn is the spiderweb rose. I think you'll be amazed at how easy it is to create these gorgeous roses. Right here, we'll begin by stitching a five spoke web with either color of floss. To start the spider web, you can see I came up at the center of the web with my floss and I'm going to go back down on the outside. I'll move to the next spoke on the web, come up and go back down on the other side and continue on the rest of the way around and knot it in the back. Bring your prepared needle up at the center of the web of one spoke. You're going to skip a spoke and insert the needle under the next one. Skip the next spoke, insert the needle under the next. Since there's an odd number as you continue around the ones you went under the first time, you'll go over the next time. This time when you're making the rows, you do want to let the ribbon twist and turn as you go through each spoke. You don't want to straighten it up. And you just continue going around and allowing the ribbon to form the petals until you get all the way to the outside edge. Now go under this spoke and I think mine is full enough. So then I'll just, by the next spoke, I'll go back down to the back of the fabric and I'll knot it on the back. That was much easier than it looks. Don't you agree? Now that you know how to embroider each of the stitches, refer to the embroidery diagram and key on page 6 of your leaflet to complete your stitching. Use the sewing needle and floss to sew on the beads. If you wish to clean your embroidery, be sure to follow the instructions on the insert. 
trim your embroidered design about a half inch smaller than the mat all the way around. I've already trimmed mine. Then you're going to want to take your tape strips and roughly measure the size that you will need to go on each side and on the ends. Remove one side of the tape backing. And apply the strips along the inside edge. Burnish them down really well and that should make it easier to get the other side of the tape off. You're not going to want to overlap them, so I'm going to need to trim this just a little bit. And the same thing here, as I get it put down, I'm going to trim it so it doesn't overlap the other piece. Now take one of the corners, pull it up, and then you're ready to press your design into it. I suggest laying it down and then flipping it over so you can see exactly where it's going to be so you can get it positioned the way you'd like. Press it to adhere. Then you can remove the tape from the other sides and press it down. Be sure to kind of stretch it a little bit so it'll lay nice and flat. Pull the opposite side and then do the two sides, just pulling slightly. If you have any edges that are too close to the edge of the frame, go ahead and trim those because you'll need some adhesive to adhere the frame to the box. Now we're going to repeat the process to add adhesive all the way around the outside edges of the box. As you can see, I applied tape all the way around the edges again, and I'm going to press it to the top of the box to secure. Cut the remaining tape in half lengthwise, and then you'll cut it into strips again that will fit the area that you would like to cover with the braided trim. Apply these all the way around, then you'll pull off the backing and press your braided trim into them to secure. Thanks for stitching with me today. I'm sure this elegant box will be enjoyed for a long time. Please help us make Annie's Creative Woman kits the best they can be by taking a quick survey. Just click on the 10 second survey tab.